hey, we have a lesson on the Pythagorean theorem, and you might think that, hey, I'm an expert at the Pythagorean theorem. Well, you probably are. But on this slide right here, we're going to show you the proof on how the um, one way to prove the Pythagorean theorem to be true. Um, here's the Pythagorean theorem, which you know that it's in a right triangle, and it's only in a right triangle. The square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. So C is the hypotenuse, A and B are the legs. Now, typically you don't think of it as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Typically you think of it as that right there, like that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But I would prefer that you think about it like this. Um, for the simple fact that the next section we're going to talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, and it needs you to set it up like this in order to um, oh, in order to relate some information that you have learned in the past to what you are going to be learning in that lesson. So if we look here, um, let's prove this. So let's go ahead and set up some variables here. Let's let this be B. And this one be A, and then this whole side is C. Well, what I want to do is I want to take this, and I want to create an altitude right there. And right there, we're going to call that perpendicular postulate. allows us to do that. It's going to go from the vertex to the opposite side so that it forms a 90 degree angle. And that's going to be the um, first step there in your proof. If this is point A, this is point B, and this is point... I got those backwards. This is point C, and this is point B. There we go. Um, you're going to, let's see, call this D. So we're going to create create segment CD um, to form a right angle with segment AB. It's going to be your first step in your proof, and that's going to be the um, perpendicular postulate is what you're going to use there for your reasoning. Okay, so once you have that one, step number two. Um, step number two, what we're going to do is we're just going to fill in some other letters here. That way we can talk about individual segments themselves. Um, e goes from point A to point D, and F goes from point D to point B. Okay, so you've already learned that if you have these three right triangles, they're going to, going to all be similar. So if they're all similar, we, can, we know that their sides are proportional. So their sides are proportional. Let's look at the large triangle. The large triangle. We're going to compare side A and side C at this moment. So we're going to say the long leg over top of the hypotenuse. That's equal to. And now we are looking at the medium sized triangle. What is the long leg of that medium sized triangle? The long leg is going to be F. And the hypotenuse is A. Okay, so that's one proportion that we've set up. I want to go ahead and set up another one while we're at it. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the large triangle. 
and we are going to say the short side B over top of the hypotenuse is equal to now let's look at the small triangle what is the short side in that small triangle the short side is letter E and what is the hypotenuse letter B so therefore we have those ratios set up and now we're going to move to the next step here the next step is going to allow us to do some cross multiplying there so step number three you're going to go ahead and cross multiply those two proportions to come up with two two things for our next step you're getting a squared is equal to c times f and then you're going to get b squared is equal to c times e that is going to be the cross product property and what I want to do is I want to take I want to take this um, a squared is equal to CF okay. so if we're going to have that wasn't a very good looking name so if we're going to have a squared is equal to C F alright so that's just coming from up here a squared is equal to C F now here's the thing <clears throat> down below I'm going to add B squared to it but on the right side of the equal sign I'm not going to add B squared to it I'm going to add C E to it and I've added the same thing to both sides so the equation is still balanced I've just added the same thing to both sides and we call that the addition property of equality now that we've done that we're going to we're going to keep a squared plus b squared but on the right side, what can I factor out of CF and CE? You can factor a C out of there, leaving you with F plus E inside the parentheses. And that's going to be the distributive property. The distributive property allows you to do that. And now what I want you to do is I want you to look back at the triangle and look at this right here look at this um, parentheses F plus E and then look at the triangle and try to figure out what F plus E is equal to F plus E well follow along if this is F and if this is E together what do they make together they make C So let's go ahead and write that down. F plus E is equal to C. I believe we added two segments together, so that's called the segment addition postulate. Um, let me scroll down here to get some more room. I guess that's all we have. And now let's do some substitution. This is coming from step 5. A squared plus B squared. That's going to be equal to C. And then now what can we have in parentheses? Instead of F plus E, we are going to have... C in there now that 
is the substitution property of equality. And from there, the next step, next step you should say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I believe that's just simplifying. That's just simplifying there. And so now, if we look there, we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. But that is not what the Pythagorean theorem states. This is in a right triangle. The square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to. So we have to have the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to. We have to have that first. So, if you look there, you can step number nine, switch that around, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And so, we've gone from having one right triangle to using the altitude to create three right triangles and then using what we know about those three right triangles we have worked it out to determine that the Pythagorean theorem holds true or not that it holds true we have worked it out to prove the Pythagorean theorem so We have any major questions there? This is one way to prove the Pythagorean theorem. There are many, many ways to prove the Pythagorean theorem. This is just one of those ways. And you, um, I believe you're supposed to know a couple different ways to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So once we go, um, once we move on and actually use it, we will be knowing why it works is because of this. Let's see you go ahead and calculate this. Um, if you feel like you are an expert at this, remember it says find the value of b. Well, b is right here, but in c squared, in the Pythagorean theorem, it says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Remember that this b that we have in our picture is not the b right there. It is not that b because the b that we have in the picture is across from the right angle which means that it is the hypotenuse. Okay, so b is the hypotenuse in our situation and 5 is a, 7 will be b. So 5 squared plus 7 squared and we get 25 plus 49. So b squared is equal to 74. And then so from here, um, you're going to take the square root of both sides. And remember, it's plus or minus. Once you take the square root of both sides, it should be positive or negative. But we're only working with the positive solution. So it's positive square root of 74. Now can you simplify it? Does any of these perfect squares go into 74? Well, if you don't know, think about this. 74 is 37 times 2, and 37 is a prime number, 2 is a prime number, and therefore we can't break those down any further. And so square root of 74 is our solution for B, the hypotenuse in that right triangle. If you feel like you can calculate this one, pause the video and then hit play when I'm finished. Or actually hit play when you're finished. Uh, 
in this situation, we're going to have the square root of 117 squared. That is the hypotenuse. The legs are 9 squared and a squared. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. That's how I know it's the square root of 117. Now, remember, square root and squaring cancel each other out, leaving us with 117. 9 squared is 81, and a squared is a squared. We're going to subtract 81 from both sides, leaving us with uh, 36. That's equal to a squared, and you should know that the square root of 36 is 6. So therefore, a is equal to 6. Okay, we're moving right along. Here's the situation here. This is the base of a ladder. It is placed 10 feet from a house, and the top of the ladder touches the house 14 feet above the ground. If the house creates a 90 degree angle with the ground, how long is the ladder rounded to the nearest tenth? So here's what's happening. We have this house right here. Probably have like a little window here. You know, some little kid hanging out of it. Got a big old smile on his face. Old dad's crawling up here. Clean out the gutters. From when it was raining. Got a bunch of leaves in there. <clears throat> so. What we need to figure out. Or actually, what old Pops has to figure out, Pops has to figure out how long his ladder has to be. If his gutters are 14 feet above the ground. Alright, so in our little situation, let's go through here. It's 10 feet from the house, so we know that this is 10 feet. The ladder touches the house 14 feet above the ground, so we know that this is 14. And it makes a 90 degree angle. Uh, the house does with the ground. So we're trying to figure out how long the ladder is rounded to the nearest tenth. Okie dokie. Well, we know x is the hypotenuse. 10 squared and 14 squared, or 10 and 14 are the legs. So 10 squared is 100. 14 squared is 196. So we have 296 here. We've got to take the square root of both sides. And so when we take the square root of 296, the square root of 296 is equal to 65053 that's all my calculator shows so now you have to read the question make sure you answer the question that it's asking it says to the nearest tenth right here is the tenth position How about the zero does it round the two up or keep it the same it keeps the two the same so x has to be 17.2 feet that's how long the ladder has to be in order to reach the gutters. Clean out the leaves. And uh, make that little kid smile a little bit more. Alrighty. This is going to be like a 16 foot pool. Let's put it into the ground. You need to use a guide wire to keep it stable. This uh, could possibly become your job at some point and you might need to put poles in the ground. So find the length that the wire needs to be in order for it to connect to the pool right here, come down and connect to the ground so the pool doesn't fall over and crash. So the hypotenuse, we would assume that this is a 90 degree angle and so therefore C is the hypotenuse. 12 and 16. 12 and 16 are the legs. And so we're supposed to square those. 
So 12 squared is 144, 16 squared is 256, and C squared. 144 and 256 make 400. And once we take the square root of both sides, C is equal to 20. And since 12 and 16 are in feet, 20 feet. Now here's the thing. Once we look at these three, 12, 16, 20. Well, you probably should have noticed that this was 3, 4. Um, 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. So therefore, 4 times what number is 20? 4 times 5. And that was a Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5. So that's one other way you could have solved that problem. Either way gets you the right answer, but the Pythagorean triple probably would have been a little bit quicker. Nevertheless, here is a... Find the length of a diagonal in the rectangle. So it's a rectangle. So if we look at the picture... To find the length of the diagonal in the rectangle. The diagonal connects that vertex along with that vertex, and we are supposed to find the length of the diagonal. Well, what do you know about a rectangle? A rectangle has four right angles. And so, therefore, the triangle that we're looking at is 10, 12, and an unknown length. It's a right triangle. If you feel like you can go ahead and solve this or not, go ahead and do that quickly and check your solution with mine. The hypotenuse is D, the leg is 10, and 12. So 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144. And so now we have D squared is equal to 244. D is equal to... The square root of 244. Now, which perfect squares go into 244? Well, if we look, I see 24 and I see 4, so I know that 4 goes into it. How many times does 4 go into 244? 61 times? 61 times. So, what's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 then is 2, and the square root of 61. So this is the length of the diagonal. Now if it's said to round to the nearest tenth, you should do that, but this problem does not, so you just simplify the radical. 2 times the square root of 61 is the length of the diagonal in the picture. So that is all we have for the Pythagorean theorem. I hope you remember that the proof is important for you to know how to prove the Pythagorean Theorem and just how to use it. Always keep in mind you should look at Pythagorean triples to try to make your, to save you, to actually just try to save you some time. That's all we have for today. Thank you for your time.